We're gonna get started. I will call the Board of Finance to order at 5.05 p.m. on March 20th, 23. And uh, first item on the agenda is the agenda. And I'm hoping it can be moved with one late change, which is 5.01. We are not ready to address tonight. Um, so with that, um, we can have a motion on the agenda. So moved. Second. Thank you. Any discussion of the agenda? Seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Uh, we, the agenda is adopted as amended. We are now at the public forum. Is there any member of the public? I see Sharon Busher has her hand up. Um, and we also have Councilor Jang with us, it appears now. Um, Sharon, go ahead. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I believe that the communication, my, my comments have to do with the um, reorg and um, in the water resource department. Um, and I've, I read through, and fortunately, there was that credit um, that um, they received, which allows um, the new positions and the increases to be funded, um, according to the memo, through um, FY, well, through this FY24 and FY25. And um, FY26 is a little bit up in the air because there could be someone retiring. My, my question um, really is, as you look forward, um, I, I do worry about water rates and I worry about just the impact overall um, as we add positions to the city. Um, I'm, I'm pleased that we compensate people well. Um, the benefit package is, is a great one, but I, as someone who has, you know, now lived on a fixed income for a while, I, I don't want to be priced out of living in Burlington and, and I'm, and I worry about that. Um, so I have to comment every time. Um, to you and to the Board of Finance to just make sure that people are thinking about how this plays out. This one seems okay, but overall, as you're embarking on a new budget, um, you know, it, it trickles down to renters and it, and I don't know if we can always afford to do what we'd like to do. So those are my comments. Thank you so much. Great, Jen. Thank you. Appreciate your renewed attention to these issues. With that, um, I don't believe we have anyone else. Uh, actually, I should check. Is there anyone in the room um, that is hoping to speak to the, to the board? <clears throat> the public forum. It doesn't look like it. And there is. I do have one other attendee online. If you are online and seeking to be recognized, it's, to raise your hand. Raised, I think. Like it's uh, one was right. Councillor Jang trying to oh, get in. Oh, okay. He's in okay. now. Okay. Um, so I think we have heard from everyone who wants to speak to the board. So I'm going to close the public forum and we will now move to the consent agenda. Um, <clears throat> I welcome a motion on the consent agenda. A motion to uh, adopt the consent agenda and take the actions as indicated. Thank you, sir. Second. Second. Great. Second by Councillor McGee. Um, discussion of the consent agenda. Seeing that we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, and we have adopted the consent agenda. Um, Okay, uh, we're now 4.01, and uh, we are planning a overview of the city's insurance program. That's why Paul's here. Do you want to say anything, Catherine? To take um, just a quick, um, um, yeah. Councilor Jang, just so you're aware, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. 
the oh. video okay. is quite odd. It's sort of glitching in and out. So I just upgraded it. That's why. I see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with the camera off, uh, it's not happening. So just shoot so you know. Thank you. Um, kicking us off, uh, I can't remember, it was maybe a month or two ago, um, I got a question about insurance and I said, I don't know the answer to that, but I know someone who does, and it was my good friend Paul Plunkett who's here, and um, that conversation sort of morphed into, um, we have been um, fortunate to have a presentation from Hickok and Mormon most years. We've kind of gotten out of that habit um, because of COVID. And in advance of our marvelous nights of May coming up um, and uh, upcoming budget conversations, we thought it would be a good time to get back to that practice. So um, we won't spend too long on this, but maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Paul's going to walk us through all of our insurance coverages. So take it away, Paul. Okay, thank you, Catherine. I, I'll, I'll give you a high level overview of the documents that I'm assuming everyone received. Yes. It uh, gives you a summary of. Yeah. Share that document. It'll take me a minute, but sure. Go that, ahead. that summary uh, um, is an overview of the city's, city's various insurances from property liability, uh, law enforcement liability, uh, the public officials' liability, workers' compensation, the insurance that we maintain for the waterfront. Uh, so, a very comprehensive program. A uh, majority of the program is with Travelers Insurance Company. We've been uh, joined with Travelers uh, in a majority of our program for 14 years that I've been working with the city, uh, largest public entity insurer in the United States, A plus uh, AM best rated. So we're looking to do business with carriers that have the money to pay their claims and have uh, best in class claims adjudication services when a claim does occur. Um, they particularly shine very well on the workers' compensation coverages. Um, we have a high deductible program that you'll see in the packet. Our retention is $500,000 per claim. Um, uh, on average, we have saved about 15% in the total cost on the workers' comp program from when we joined the city uh, 14 years ago. And this past year, we were 30% uh, less than that 14-year-old that figure with approximately 75% more in payroll that we're rating off from. So the city's grown and that uh, cost of, uh, of insurance has declined dramatically. Wow. Uh, our challenges on the, and, and that's really embedded in some really good claim adjudication services and loss prevention services that uh, the city, both the city and our firm are applying. We do about 160 hours of loss prevention work for the Excuse city. In actual dollars for spending 30, like, it was about a million and a half when we showed up 14 years ago. It was a, it was a guaranteed cost program, different than the structure we have today. Uh, last year, we paid a million one. And again, and, uh, the, I knew we had worked hard on it. I didn't realize it was pretty. Yeah, pretty, and, and that's, this, I'm despite not even, inflation, despite growth of the place. Exactly. So we're closing yeah. claims Great quickly. Job, HR. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> closing claims quickly, getting people to uh, the right medical care and returning people back to work. As quickly as possible so that that's working well the pinch points in the program are no secret we hear it in the paper hear it in the in the news and read it in the papers each day uh, our our industry is challenged in the property insurance area because of supply chain issues uh inflation issues so the cost uh, the cost of a claim in the property area is significant and so schedules of property are being inflated to meet those claim costs so that's a challenge for us Social inflation is a challenge for us and the liability lines of coverage. So same, same lawsuits five years ago to today are infinitesimally more um, expensive. So that's being funded for in general liability, law enforcement liability, public officials liability, employment related practices liability. So we're challenged by that. Distracted driver is a challenge in the auto line. So Never before in my 35 years that have, have we been challenged in so many separate lines of coverage at the same time. A, a majority of the increase in the program over the last few years has been somewhat claim driven. 
uh, but uh, part, part of that is in the excess liability. So we were able to maintain 15 million of excess liability with travelers. Five years ago, it was $140,000. Tra travelers have, has retracted um, their available limits to us. So they're now no longer doing our umbrella coverage, which was that 15 million. So we're now using an alternative carrier at almost triple the cost. And that's happening across the country. We're no longer at 15 million, we're at 10 million plus the primary for a total of 11 million, but it's triple the cost. So that's been a real challenge primarily um, driven by the law enforcement liability issues across the country, not necessarily here at the city of Burlington, but we do get washed with that concern, if you will, from the insurers, even in this region. Um, that's a high level overview. We've in instituted a few new coverages over the last few years. We um, instituted four years ago, cyber liability network security coverage. Um, that has been challenged as well as we all read in the marketplace. Um, so that cost has gone up two or three times in the last few years. Um, we also instituted, uh, instituted a fiduciary liability coverage um, over some of the um, retirement uh, benefits that we oversee. So we put that in place a few years ago. So that's an added cost to the plan as well. As well. Questions based on what you've seen, what you've heard, certainly happy to uh, give you an overview of the workers' compensation. So premium is 590,000 plus our claim cost, which in 2022, was about 500 grand. So 1.1 million was our all in cost on the workers' comp in, in, in comparison to uh, 14 years ago as a baseline for us at a million five. The deductible is $500,000. Our claim trending is headed downward. So we are looking at uh, returning to a $350,000 deductible if the math works uh, and we can get the same price for that lower retention. So that'll that'll be favorable to the city. And, and keeping in mind that that deductible is each event. So if we have several firemen in a building that are all injured at the same time, it's one deductible. The collateral has not changed. So that is the collateral that the city uh, puts up in a form of a letter of credit for the open claim cost. Questions on the workers' comp at all? This gives you a sense for bottom line and the challenges that we've talked about uh, in the last five years relative to cost. So you'll see the um, the umbrella liability was 140,000 in 2018 and is 365 grand today. It's about middle of the page, Karen. Umbrella and excess liability, 365 versus 140. Um, we instituted the cyber liability. You'll see, it was 20 grand the first year. This year, it's it's, it's 50. Um, we're we're anticipating a six percent increase in this budget for FY24. That's what we've given the city. This is a little misleading in that this cost is not all to the city general fund because we share coverages with some of the enterprise operations as well. So that's that gets allocated, including the cost on the workers' comp. I'm kind of surprised to see the law enforcement liability actually is down so substantially from last year. We did a little bit of a deal there because travelers left us on the umbrella liability. We made them feel really bad about that, and they reduced the cost of the law enforcement, uh, the primary law enforcement liability to offset some of that increase. They did what they could to support us there. Hmm. I'm just curious, like the um, it's a other department, you know, enterprise fund. So I'm just sort of looking where is the other than the workers' comp? Is there something that is specific to one of the yeah, there's no yeah. airport, there's no there is so it, the airport, oh, yeah, that. the air. Well, they're I'm not breaking it out here, but the air, airport shares with us the workers' compensation coverage, right. the employment related practices liability coverage, as does PED. Um, let's see, the auto insurance is shared with those uh, other entities as well. So, BED and the airport, um, cyber liability is uh, is alone, so they have their own coverage for cyber liability. We do not share there. Um, I was more thinking, like, for example, there's boathouse locks, marine liability. Yes. 
I don't see something that says, I don't know. Aviation, hangar, aviation, whatever. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not broken out at this cost. Okay. We can, we do have that. We do I have think. another spreadsheet that's okay. uh, breaks out that Is cost. Is there something like from McNeil? Other than um, no, yeah. that would be all worn by the city uh, or the um, um, uh, Burlington Electric Company or department. So that McNeil is, they is all. Um, no, you you mean McNeil? Well, like is if something were to happen to McNeil or there was an accident, yeah. they do you know, have yeah, they that, have but some liability. are together yeah. and some are still separate. I see. And so right. when I'm not remembering. The, well, there's the joint owners. And the person yes. who's the head of safety at BED who comes to us, head of risk. Oh, oh, well, Paul Alexander. Alexander. Paul yes. Alexander. Yeah. He usually comes to us once a year right. as well. Yes, so he he'll come back and we can ask him. That's more the question. Yeah. 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 Yes, it's another yeah. Paul. Why it's, it's, yeah. that? So I ensure it's that, an insurance. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so ensure the McNeil plan, along with their other assets, in a separate policy yeah. with there are four insurers that make up that, that program. Chancellor Hightower had her hand up. Go ahead, Chancellor Hightower. If you can Hi, I'll be there in a second, but just joining remotely until then. Okay. Did you have a question or? I did not, no. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, Chancellor Chang, go ahead. Yep, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for the presenter. I was just wondering if anyone from the legal team can tell us around pending litigation that involve law enforcement and how does this relate with this uh, insurance liability we're talking about? So, Councillor Jang, I can just try to speak to that um, briefly. So, what I would say to that is, for generally for our litigation claims, we have a deductible that the city is paying out of pocket before um, our insurance coverage kicks in. That's true with litigation that involves um, the police department or any other department of the city. Um, typically, I think it's about $20,000, although I am sure that Paul will correct me if, if there are some nuance to that. So generally speaking, I would say our, our litigation coverage includes the police department, um, but it also is subject to a deductible just like the rest of our coverage. Correct, just to clarify that, the law enforcement uh, legal liability deductible is $50,000. General liability is first dollar coverage, no deductible. Thanks, Paul. You bet. All right. Thank you. Sorry, I'm asking you to repeat yourself. I know it's interesting how much the commercial auto is up. So a couple of things are, are bearing in on that. We had some years of tough claim activity. Uh, we've also grown the fleet. I don't have those that data with me, but the fleet's probably grown by 20%. And then there's new for old transitions that happen as well. Um, and and really, it's, it's the fact that we've been actually replacing the fire engines at all. Right, exactly. So we're growing new for old, we're growing by numbers. Um, and the industry has been up 10 to 15% year over year for the last few years because of distracted driver claim funding, not specific to the city, but industry-wide. Oh, that's what you're referring to before. Yeah, okay. exactly. Exactly. Um, another question, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, go ahead, Councilor Jenkins. Thank you. And it's specific to the cyber liability. And I was just wondering if it's across all departments, including um, the enterprise, um, you know, departments or yes. separate. The, yes, the um, uh, BED has its own cyber liability network security uh, coverage, and we're combined with uh, the, the airport. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Anything further you're open to get yeah, to? I'm good, but I'm good. certainly willing to entertain. Uh, this is good. I, it's been a little while since we had a conversation like this. And I um, uh, can see you're dealing with some uh, dynamic challenges, as you, as you described. Um, and can you just remind us, like, how with each of these, you're out there on the city's behalf. Uh, Getting out. competitive bids to get sure. each other doing everything. 
Yeah, I'll give you an example. Uh, Liberty Mutual is the insurer for our property. They're the third insurer we've used in 14 years. So, yeah. in fact, this year we're out to bid on the city's property insurance, looking to potentially combine that with BEDs for a holistic discount. So, as you know, the BEDs had challenges trying to find um, attractive property insurance. So, we're entertaining an insurer that will do both, and we're hoping that that benefits both. Um, but yes, so we pick apart the program each year, look at where we have opportunities for bidding. It's not um, systematic because sometimes the timing relative to claim activity may prevent us from going to market and looking not perfect to the market at that time. But it is always part of our analysis with Catherine and with HR. Great. All right, if there's no further questions from the board, uh, I think we could let Paul go. But this was uh, so uh, not so easy, Mr. Paul. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, can you please help me understand the distinction between public official bounds and also the public official liability? Is that? Yeah, so have... public, did you say public official bonds? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, we secure a crime related coverage for the city of Burlington that applies to all employees with an exception of three positions, one of which is Catherine's. And we have to, we, we then buy a separate public officials bond for those three individuals in the amount of $500,000. That protects the city from any um, impropriety relative to city funds. The public officials liability is a third party liability. So if the city um, uh, in its operations makes a decision that is uh, unpopular with an individual outside the city and they sue the city, that's the policy that will come into play to entertain those economic damages. So one's a liability coverage, one is a crime coverage. Uh, one is a what, the last one? One is a li liability coverage, public officials liability, and one is a crime related coverage or an employee dishonesty coverage. Okay, wonderful. Uh, now, do we have any type of insurance in terms of uh, a policy? So for example, the legal resident could be um, challenged into court and does, do we have any type of insurance to cover that? Not sure I understand the question. So as you know, the city of Burlington, we also put, let's say, um, ballot items. And we hear lately that the city of Winooski and also um, Montpelier, uh, they are being challenged to court in terms of allowing non-citizens to vote, right? Um, and in those instances, do we, any, do we have any type of insurance that we need to put aside? Are we covered in that area? You're, quite, you're saying if we get, yes, you're saying if, if the city is sued and we have legal costs to defend the suit, well, do we have coverage for that? Yes. The policy that would entertain that would be the public officials liability coverage. Sir? That would be where we would enter the claim. That's the only place we could entertain that claim. I think I'm done now. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and it just depends on what the suit is, right? I mean, we often right. yeah we so, did, we often have the defense paid for by by travelers, travelers exactly. exactly. With uh, it, it could be in other parts of the coverage where. Uh, yeah, it would be the public officials that would be the only place that would enter. On this it. one, but if it was a different topics, like it could come from there. Yeah, that's right. So if we had a slip and fall in City Hall Park, then that's the general liability and the umbrella. Um, absolutely. And, and But any of the, the, ec, the um, uh, claims that are entertaining a disagreement of philosophy or an economic damage is always going to be the public officials liability. We've had a track record of responding to those types of claims and meeting okay. those uh, defense costs. That's interesting. All right, very good. Any, I didn't mean to cut this off pretty much earlier. Are we ready, support ready to move on? I think we're done. Thank you very much. Awesome. Paul. Thank you so and much. Appreciate sure being in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for your work. Yeah. All right. Um, we will now move.
to 5.02, which is aceto CJC reclassification of three positions and a creation of one position. So welcome, welcome Rachel. Thanks. Uh, so we have three um, reclassifications that from different programs. I guess the overarching short story that you'll want to hear is that these don't have an impact on the general fund and then are covered by um, our various contracts. So the first um, that you actually just approved in a consent agenda with the balanced and restorative justice contract is moving the staff member that we've had for a year and a half from limited to regular since that NAP now contract is in a more stable um, sustainable position. The second would be the community assistance program coordinator that is related to a bit of a reorganization that we're doing that hopefully you were able to see in the accompanying organizational charts. We had a victim services manager and instead of um, kind of siloing our victim services, we're trying to integrate them more. So we're putting aside that position. Uh, the person who held that position is going into the conflict assistance program coordinator position. And because of her background and abilities, it is able to expand that program. It's the, the conflict assistance program is a more proactive upstream uh, mediation based kind of program. So we're wanting to expand the number of hours as well as diversify the funding for that position to include DOC um, funding as well as the justice assistance grant funding that it, that it had had. And so by increasing the responsibilities and the hours, we're wanting to reclassify that from uh, 15 regular service to um, grade 16, uh, still regular service. Um, and then the adult restorative volunteer coordinator, um, because of this reorg again, is gonna be taking on supervisory um, responsibilities and becoming more of a man manager of our adult restorative programming. So we're looking at reclassifying that one to be in line with our two other manager positions. And then again, related to the reorganization with the um, lack of, you know, un taking away some of the capacity from the victim services manager and trying to have more of the team take on both working with responsible and impacted parties, we're wanting to create a coordinator level position, the adult restorative um, coordinator, a, a new position called the adult restorative coordinator. So that's the overview and Great. we're happy to answer any questions. Very good, thank you. Are there any questions, Rachel, go ahead. Sorry, I know you just tried to kind of do that, but can you just talk a little bit about as a whole, how this changes, how CJC is working compared to maybe three years ago? Three years ago would be a really different answer because we didn't have the core diversion of pretrial services uh -huh. contract. So we've changed a lot in these last three years. I would say compared to a year ago, it's trying to integrate in every position, the cross-training ability to work with both responsible and impacted parties, rather than having a separate division that just works with our victim services. We've had our parallel justice program since 2006 that does work with just victims, but one of the staff people now, given how the caseloads changed during the pandemic, we had two FTEs covering the parallel justice, and that didn't seem necessary anymore, so we um, tried to diversify one of that because person's, you know, one of that staff member's positions to already work with our restorative program. So that was our first inkling of the benefits of trying to integrate people's ability to cover when other people are gone, for instance, as well as see the whole view of if you've worked with an impacted party, generally our, our program, because it's so downstream and funded by criminal legal partners, it's easy to just think of your main person as the responsible party. As we're trying to be more victim informed at least, we wanna have everybody trained to be able to always be thinking about the victim's needs. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope that answers your question in terms of that integration overall goal that we're aiming for. It does, yes, thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you. I have a can you, question, Mr. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can go ahead. Yes, thank you, Rachel, again, for the great work that you do, and also for the amazing amount of grants that we have approved lately. You know, I think it's, it's, it's great work. But allow me to ask about the sustainability of these positions uh, in correlation to those grants, right? And also these increases. What percentage is it? Is it that is paid by grant or what percentage is it paid by the general fund? And how do we sustain all of this too? So out of our $1.4 million budget that we're looking at for fiscal year 24, 91% is sustained by contracts and grants. 9% comes from the general fund. Wonderful. 
This is great. Thank you so much. Um, and also, you know, I, I feel that there is this community advocate or diversity advocate position. Um, is it part of a grant too or part of the That's a great program? question. Yeah, not yet, but you know, stay tuned. The cultural advocate program is something that we're trying to grow that right now is covered by our current grants. Uh, the Department of Corrections um, gave each CJC a small amount, $5,000 in fiscal year 23, to do more DEI related um, initiatives. And that's what we've used kind of as seed funding to start this cultural advocate program, but we do hope to grow it and actually believe that the, the grants should be covering it. It's part of the work. It's necessary to serve the people we're serving and to do proper restorative justice. You can't have restorative justice without racial justice as well. And so um, like, even though you may hear more about it through our various memos, we don't expect this to be a big general fund request coming down the pipe. This is, we're trying to make our case actually through the legislature that the current contracts need to fund CJCs um, to do DEI work as part and parcel of what we're doing. Excellent, thank you so much. Any, any further discussion or ready for motion? That's me. Uh, I'd be happy to make the motion as uh, recommended on board docs. Second. Great. Any further discussion? Seeing that we'll go to vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Are any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And we are now with 5.02. Thank you, Rachel. Um, 5.03 and 5.04 are two police personnel items. Welcome, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So 5.03 is a reclassification and titling of a network administrator, the senior, senior network administrator. Key that up more. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. And thank you very much to the board for having me. Um, so uh, the Network administrator is our uh, primary, uh, our primary technical person. Um, we had a network administrator, that individual left for another opportunity. We have not been able to fill the spot since. We have actually been working with the same individual on a part-time basis uh, and have been getting continuing very strong service. It was, it was a, a loss to us to have that individual move on. Um, we believe that with this bump, we can attract additional talent, potentially that individual back to the police department, but also just the, the length of time the spot's been open has been indicative of the fact that we're just not really meeting market rates on this. But it's not just a, a saying that, we've uh, that we want the position to be uh, to be compensated differently. We've also changed its parameters. There is going to be a new position that reports to it. We've changed the reporting structure as well. It reports outside uh, to, it will now report directly to the deputy chief of administration. Um, our situation at, at uh, the police department is different than many other parts of the city in that uh, we have a lot of very unique restrictions on access both to the physical plant as well as access to the systems. And those are governed largely by the federal government and its requirements around what they call CGIS or criminal justice information systems. Uh, CGIS is, is, a, uh, is a challenge for us at times just with regard to the ways in which we can and can't uh, allow people to have access to it. Um, and it, it makes uh, the need for a person who's embedded and also knowledgeable about the relatively unique structures really important. Thanks, Chief. Councillor Hightower. Who currently supervises the help desk and IT staff? Uh, it currently reports to the business manager. And no changes are being made to the business manager position. That's just to release. Well, the, the business manager is uh, has been with the police department for a very, very long time. Um, our, our expectation is actually some changing of, of reporting patterns to that role um, in anticipation of, of just sort of changes for the business manager. I think that um, I don't want to, I don't, I, I don't uh, reveal too much. Got yeah. it. <laughs> so I, anyway. not a bad thing. Just yeah. it, not, it's not a bad thing at all. It just, <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, no worries. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's just, 
Okay. So we're happy to talk offline. Yes, <laughs> absolutely the, happy to talk offline. Issue. Glad you understand. <laughs> um, any further questions, uh, discussion? Are we ready for motion, uh, President Paul? Thanks. I'll make the motion as recommended on both votes. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, um, and we really can't see you, Councilor Jang. So uh, feel free to, as you have been, speak up if you to be recognized. Um, we will go. To, we will go to a, a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Post. Leave. Sorry, that's my niece. Sorry. Ah. <laughs> Motion carries unanimously. Um, so now we go to 5.04, right, which is the reclassification of a fire police accountant position. Go ahead, Chief. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, this is a, a position that is just, uh, it's a long time in coming for a reclassification for this position. Um, it has been reclassified in, in 17 years. Uh, this is our accountant. Uh, it, it is responsible for our, uh, you know, our, our budget monitoring. Um, here too, this is a position that is going to be, that does report to the business manager, will continue to report to the business manager. Um, but is going to be, I think, increasingly important with regard to being able to, to help keep that part of our department on track. Um, and in the coming years, uh, this is mostly about getting, I think, some equality of, of compensation for uh, other similar, similarly situated, although not identical positions in the city. Um, but mostly just that this is a position, the person who's been in it has been in it for quite some time, and the position has not been reclassified in quite some time. Thank you. Floor is open for questions or motion. Yes, I was just wondering about what, um, how do we reclassify? Is it because the scope of work has changed? or um, is it something else? That's one. And I thought that also any employee in the city on a yearly basis, they receive some type of salary increase, like you know, 3%, 8%, depending on, on the position. Can you please clarify that for me? Yes, of course. Thank you for the question. So uh, yes, employees do re receive step increases um, that are annual. Uh, and then there eventually that that does top out. This particular employee is in fact topped out. But it, it's not about the employee, of course. It's about the position. The position itself has not been uh, reclassified in, in 17 years. There are other positions in the city that occupy similar roles, um, and this one those have been more recently reevaluated and increased. Uh, and some of them have been increased in, to, to steps higher than the one that we are currently requesting this one to be classified to. And that, again, is because, as I said, they are, are similarly situated, but I can't claim them to be identical. Nevertheless, they're, they're sufficiently similar that their increases are indicative of the need in the sense of, of fairness uh, of, uh, of an increase for this one as well. Um, and I certainly would invite the CAO to weigh in as well. These were discussions we've had over a, a long time. Uh, I've been seeking this for, for quite a bit for this particular position. Uh, and we've had go back and forth with both HR and the CAO and the mayor's office as well. And the chief of staff has been very diligent about ensuring that what we're requesting is, is reasonable and uh, in keeping with other increases that have been seen around the city. Um, I think Chief Mirad did a great job. I'll just add a little bit, and we do have some um, HR representation here. So if I get anything wrong, someone will stop me, I'm sure. Um, but uh, we do have the process um, of regular COLA increases uh, that Chief Mirad was talking about. And those are um, guaranteed increases on an employee's anniversary date. Um, but those do not um, take into account either an increase in uh, duties or a change of duties, um, which would uh, need cause the need to have this looked at by HR. Or in this case, I think it was both that and the fact that uh, 
HR hadn't looked at this in light of um, changes that had not only happened in this position, but in positions that were like this around the city to make sure that the pay for this position was still equitable in light of what we were paying for other similar positions. So this is the mechanism um, by which HR does that, this reclassification process. Can you give me one example of a similar position in the city that have been increased lately? That have been, yeah. Uh, so there is a position in um, the CT office um, that is uh, sort of similar to um, this fire and police accountant. Of course, the accountants in CT oversee all of the city in theory, but in reality, they have portfolios and um, fire and police are the most complex of the accounting that we do. And so um, they really partner with um, the fire and police accountant heavily and rely on that um, specialized knowledge. So um, it's my understanding that that was a point of reference for HR in this. And I don't know if there's anybody from HR who was involved in the grade egg. I was, I was not involved in this one, but I can tell you that. If you, you want to come up here just sure. so they can hear you. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> I didn't work on this, but I don't know if Chris are here. So <laughs> um, if it was reclassified, it meant that we added something to the job. So it wasn't just reclassified for the sake of being classified so we would have uh, graded the job and, and looked at what the changes were and then compared it to similar jobs in the city um i didn't bring out a thing the police department said i usually no worries but um but there would have definitely been changes to the job and i would say in probably 17 years there were probably changes to those similar jobs and nothing had been updated with this particular job that would be my assumption if I may, very quickly, one thing that has happened over the past uh, three years is is the introduction of a, a large number of new roles to the police department, all of which have sort of new accounting practices, and, and uh, there has been sort of a learning curve there. Um, thank you. Um, and I think the past two, the last two explanations that I received uh, are missing, basically, on the memo. And... I hope that you guys can sell more about, um, you know, increasing the salary of your employees. And I think another element also could be managing uh, overtimes lately um, at the police department. Um, you know, all of those need to be in a memo so it's clear for people who are reading it to understand it better. But I do believe overall, the city need a better process in increasing these salaries by hiring maybe a consultant any position to look into also outside. It's not just because, yeah, this department or this department have received increase and another department should receive an increase as well. I think we need to establish a better process that very thoughtful and methodical in looking into elsewhere around, around, around the municipality as well. But I'm happy to make the motion um, to support as indicated on board that. Thank you, Councilor Jane. Second by Councilor Hightower. Any further discussion? We'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, and uh, maybe consider, since we get a benefit of staggering the board of finance like this, is uh, maybe for the final memo that goes to the full board, consider whether. Add some of these notes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, sir. Okay. Thank you to the board. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, 5.05, reclassification of three water resources positions, creation of three new water positions. And, um, uh, point of information, Mr. Mayor. Yes. I was wondering if we did 5.01, the city assessor one. Um, you, uh, the agenda was amended when it was adopted to, uh, to move that 5.01 and we'll be just not ready for action today. All right, wonderful, thank you. Um, so we are on 
Welcome, Jacob. Welcome, Megan. Um, this is a significant item and one I know you put a bunch of work into, so you uh, tee it up first. Yes, thank you for indulging us with seven items tonight at the Board of Finance <laughs> meeting. Um, this first one is a very important one. Uh, as we know, water, wastewater, stormwater, three regulated utilities, uh, enterprise funds in the city. Uh, this is a long season proposal and it does propose three additional positions and three reclassifications here. Um, we do thrive providing uh, water services 24 seven to the city. We've talked to you in the past about the increased regulation we're facing, the aging infrastructure, all of our plants have not been overhauled in at least 30 years, uh, the water plant more. And there is a growing expectation of coordinated work. We don't wanna see a paving project done uh, without water being coordinated with that. As a matter of fact, you'll see that on the next agenda item coming to you tonight. Um, so we've worked with HR, uh, to bring forward tonight's proposal. And one of the things that I wanna clarify as department uh, director here is that uh, I am coordinating a similar review of the technical services team in DPW so that we are moving in coordination and not uh, having unintended discrepancies between divisions. This is an exciting proposal in my mind that is budget neutral for FY24 and 25, and Megan will explain why. So with no further ado, I'll turn it over to division director Megan Moore. Thanks, Chapin. Um, yeah, I mean, simply put, we are looking at a very sustained period of extremely heavy workload. Um, we're not only facing a slew of generational investment needs that was brought on by you know numerous decades of underinvestment, including a 10-year period in the 1990s of no rate increases, which I believe put us on a trajectory of sort of always struggling with trying to fill in the hole. Um, and that's compounded quite severely by a new, numerous regulatory burdens, additional regulatory burdens. So not just doing what we're doing 24 seven, but doing it even better, which certainly Burlingtonians deserve, the lake deserve, the environment deserves. So it's not something they were opposed to. It's just everything kind of happening at once. You bought a really old house, everything needs to be overhauled and brought up to code. Um, and and it's, it's really challenging. Um, a sporting metaphor would be, I feel like I'm a soccer player, which both have 11 people. We're on a really big field that's sometimes growing and I've got about seven. I haven't let goals in because I have an amazing, amazing team, but we're tired, we're covering more than we need to, and we're certainly not putting the goals in that, that Burlingtonians deserve. Um, we, and I'll get into the details, uh, Sharon Busher brought up, you know, rate payer affordability um, and that, you know, she doesn't want anybody to be priced out of living in Burlington. That was the exact reason that we worked to bring forward what I consider the foundation of the ratepayer affordability program, it's just the start. Uh, we're actually, hopefully for FY24, doing a review of that ratepayer affordability program, trying to look at some other communities, how they're uh, providing assistance to renters, and how we can turn the dials up as necessary as our rates need to increase. There are plenty of people in Burlington who can pay more for their water. They already pay a significant amount for other things like cable and cell phone. Um, but there are people who are going to be burdened by that. We want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, so that's definitely in the forefront of our minds. Um, the, the three position ads uh, are largely about, I guess I'll start with the, the creation of the special projects engineering uh, position. Well, I won't get emotional. Steve Roy, um, you know, he's been with the city for 35 years. He is the water resources division. He's had his hand in everything, and he is going to retire within two years, if not sooner. Um, and so this position really is about providing our organization with that necessary stability and resiliency. You don't always know when somebody's going to retire or depart, but when you do, what do you do with those last few years of their time, which is so critical? And in his case, we are you know going to have him available for mentorship. Um, I call him less than I used to, but I still like <laughs> help a lot. Um, but also to work on some high priority documentation and training tools that will give to future generations. He knows the wastewater plants, he knows the water plant better than anybody. We need him to write it down. We need him to have time to do that. The position, uh, the creation of the director of engineering and operations, you know, I've looked at a lot of different org charts and other water resources organizations, our own Burlington Electric and why they call those managers and people below them are directors, which I don't entirely get, but is what it is. They have enough of a structure with a little bit more depth 
um, on the leadership team on, and, and really trying to bring more technical and management horsepower um, you know, onto my team to review all the complexities. I mean, I'm, I'm on calls even today. It's probably why I've got migraine starting where it's just trying to figure out all the moving pieces. And if you change this, you're, you're changing that. Um, needing somebody else who can also walk with me in some cases or for me so that I can work on other things. Um, and really just guiding technical staff and really delivering the best product for our ratepayers. We're doing pretty well, but I think we could do more. Uh, and then lastly, the wastewater plant mechanic position. This was actually a position that was identified in our 2019 Raptelis staffing study that we've kind of been sitting on. Um, but as we look at not just the fact that things are breaking more and more frequently at the plant until we can get to that upgrade, but even during the upgrade, uh, I've never been through a wastewater treatment plant upgrade, but I know that the stuff doesn't stop like 24 seven. So talk about a slide puzzle of coordination and the things that are gonna crop up and needing to make sure we have a fully trained, resilient staff who can keep things going even when we're trying to literally build the, the plane as we're flying it. Uh, the other reclassifications are just, you know, some moves, I don't know how much detail to go into those. Um, uh, and then the reorganization, the reporting structure is the other key piece of having this director of operations uh, and engineering is moving a couple of small teams under one person who can then coordinate the activities of the engineering asset management group, the stormwater group, and the water distribution group. They already work pretty well together, but formalizing that and having it go through somebody else other than me uh, is really the, the driver behind that. Um, as Chapin mentioned, um, due to some cost savings, we are able to keep this uh, budget neutral through FY24 and FY25. Uh, the special projects position would uh, where it is, be reabsorbed. Re so yes. Um, uh, and then I think by that time, we're going to have a better idea of what our true wastewater plant staffing needs are. So there could be a shift and we don't need as many. There could be more until we figure out all the different places and what our plant's gonna look like, um, including the new treatment technology that we're gonna be putting in place for phosphorus removal. It's a little hard to say. So I'm gonna tell you about the next two years. Great. Um, we'll open up for questions. Or, or not? Uh, go ahead, uh, Councillor. Well, maybe, oh, maybe you know. I, let me just. Uh, <laughs> right. Maybe I'll take one. It is a lie. Yeah. Well, let me let me say a few more things. Um, to share with the board. Um, I feel like it might be helpful to share with the board how I've been thinking about this. So, Chairman Megan came to start the discussion several months ago. Um, I, you know. Um, uh, conscious of the fact that we together approved some significant changes to water um, not long ago, really want to understand how this fit into the kind of big picture and, and our kind of the arc of the investment and uh, strengthening of the department that we've been trying to make. And I, I'm I'm very persuaded that these three positions need to be addressed. One of them was in the Raft Ellis report that we've relied on for changes so far, as Megan just said. The senior position, it, it really is quite striking. And, you know, we don't have the art or charts, I don't think. Well, maybe we do. But like to compare like the, the, the strength of the management at the capacity, the management capacity that we've invested in and created at BD in comparison to what uh, the depth of the team that we've um, created at Water Resources is, is, is substantially different. And uh, I think that's a problem when you consider that they're you know, it's a very comparable um, set of responsibilities and kind of uh, size of uh, operations that uh, two different entities are responsible for. So it's it's long felt to me like we hadn't given, we haven't given Megan enough support in really making that kind of strategic um, management uh, decisions that that she's re responsible for and the department's responsible for. So um, I think we are being quick, you know, mindful of uh, 
former council questions, comments in the public forum. I think everyone in this effort is is very aware that these are precious repair resources, but I think this is a change is very much needed. I do think it's do you want to bring attention to the board in the memo as the memo does, this is not the last time we're going to be having conversations uh, about capacity at water. There's some additional uh, Raft Ellis work that we've commissioned. Uh, I, I wasn't comfortable going beyond these three until we did some additional analysis to understand how we uh, stood in comparison to the industry and that we had sort of had that independent look before we you know, made the significant further step of uh, increasing the headcount. So uh, I, I fully support the, what's in front of you. I think it's important that we do this. The public board is going to support us. So hope that was helpful. Councilor right there. Right. I'm happy to move the many recommended actions. <laughs> that was <laughs> it was a long Sunday. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm happy to second that. I do but just I just want to make sure I understood. <laughs> so, yeah. Great. Back in the middle, and uh, yeah. I did see you breathe, so I know yeah. that you didn't say Good. all in <laughs> um, I can't lose her. The, uh, <laughs> you said at the very end that for FY 24 and 25, what, what did you say? That's essentially budget. So the special projects position was already in the FY 23 budget, right. we just hadn't acted on that. So we have some savings for that. Um, the director of operations and wastewater mechanic position, yeah. that impact would be neutralized by the cost savings we have and can be carried forward to FY24 and 25. The, so it is budget neutral, those, those positions. Essentially. For 20 yes. And yes. that's as far as we can go yes. right now. Yeah, I mean, could we use those cost savings for other things? Sure, but I can't, it's getting very hard to do the things we need to do unless I have the people to do them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm having a um, second. I have, I have faith and confidence that you can get this and doing it for as best for your support. Okay. Any further? Any further discussion? Um, yes. Um, thank you the, for the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think you have just done a disservice to the members of the Board of Finance because this is really complex and we did not get enough sufficient time to look into this better. Creating position, reclassifying positions, I think, and the memo is, while reading it, I, I got lost in translation to tell you the truth. Another element is uh, Director Spencer, you were really good at reaching out to counselors if there are complex issues. And I think for this specific one, you missed to do that so that we can talk about them better. And for that, I was at least thinking, so we divide the question, at least vote on one of them that just the new positions tonight. And then reclassification, we bring them next time to give us enough time to, this need even a presentation to the city council about their scope of work, how does it tie into the underwater infrastructure and the bounds, and um, what uh, Councillor Boucher was sharing right, right here are so important things that we need to think about. Let's think about the bigger picture. I do not feel comfortable voting yes on all of these because I do not understand them right now. Not because it's not needed, but you did a disservice to me as someone who have limited time to do this work and doing right for the Burlingtonians. Um, I'll be voting now unless we divide the question and vote on the new positions tonight. I'm happy to remove my motion if we want to send this to council without a recommendation instead of voting on it, if that's what we want to do. Um, well, let's take a step back. So, um, there, um, it's a week before the, the council action is uh, going to happen here again. That's the benefit of, of breaking it up this way. Um, are we currently planning? I mean, one thing I've insisted on is for exactly situations like this that we'd be able to have a short board of finance meeting. I mean, uh, no, I, I uh, it, Councillor Jang, I just want to hearing you say you would like uh, the opportunity for 
to engage further with uh, with water resources before having to vote on this. If, yes, if this I would. Yes, that by next. I mean, really, I don't really. I, I'd be concerned, or at least we have to hear about the implications of of delay. But it strikes me there's a possibility of maybe allowing Chapin and Megan to follow up with you offline to have further discussion. Is it a possibility you might be in position to, to weigh in on this by next Monday? I'll be open to that, yeah. You'd be open to that, okay. So um, I, uh, I'd be inclined to um, uh, postpone action on this tonight to next Monday to give an opportunity for further engagement given level of uh, concern expressed by Councilor Jane. Um, that's, do you see any reason? I mean, but be, my, my hope yes. is to keep the same timeline and have this group next We week. certainly want to answer Councilor Jane's questions and be happy to meet with them uh, outside and any counselor who's interested in, in knowing more about this. Uh, and uh, Megan won't be here next Monday. Uh, for a previously scheduled item, but I am more than happy to represent. So just that would be one consideration for you all. But Megan is here for most of this week, so we can connect with Councilor Jang. For... I'm here. I am here for Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so again, so you know, because we do prefer to act by consensus, uh, Councilor Jang, I think that's where we're headed. If you think you'll have the you know the ability to spend some time between now and next Monday, we will. We'll, we're gonna we're gonna suspend it on that. Uh, we're gonna suspend action on that um, on that thought that you'll engage further with the the department between now. And really appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, excellent. Uh, so I guess. If there's no objection, um, we will. Uh, am I supposed to? I, I, I think. I withdraw my motion. Um, All right, sure. Why don't we do it that way? Amended let's be to formal. Motion, to motion to postpone until let's do it to a, a date certain next okay. Monday, which is May seven. Second, and any discussion of the motion? Seeing that we'll, we'll vote on that. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the motion carries unanimously and we'll, we'll reconvene on this item on, on Monday. Okay, uh, 5.06 is the calendar year 22 street reconstruction program amendment uh, with additional water resources infrastructure work on virtual Parkway. What do you would like to say a little more about this? Um, as part of a lot of our work, we are always trying to coordinate with the paving program. Um, I think it's, if you notice some other items, we're a little bit behind to just have vacancies with keeping coordinated, but we were able to assess um, the remaining calendar year 22 streets, of which first, first Cliff Parkway was one, and determined that the wastewater and stormwater infrastructure there was certainly in need of some investment. Uh, in a perfect world, the drinking water line would also be upgraded, but we simply do not have funds remaining to do that. Um, so what we can do. And so this uh, request adds um, a chunk of money uh, to the existing paving contract to be able to have the contractor take on that work as they do the repaving. And I just like give a shout out to Tech Services and Quarry Mints for working on a very complicated pots of money situation um, as we try to make sure we're managing what's what. Excellent. Um, questions from the board? Perhaps we're ready for a motion. I'm happy to make the motion as uh, recommended on board docs. Great, thank second. you, Councilor McGee. Is there a second? Yes, second. Second by Councilor Jang. Um, any further discussion? I'll just say I, I very much appreciate the attempts at, at coordination, but it, it's complicated significantly this work to do it, but I think we got a lot of value 
haven't. So thank you for the effort. Um, with that, we'll go to vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. And 5.06 is recommended. Approved yeah. and recommended. So you know, thank you, Mike. Um, go to 5.07, the calendar year 23 paving contract. Uh, go ahead. So for calendar year 23. So this is the calendar year 23 paving contracts. We're looking to get authorization for the funding um, to execute this contract um, for following a city council approval, as well as a uh, change order number one, which would include an additional approximately and uh, well, a large um, patchwork as well to go along with the paving contract. We went to bid. We had three uh, bidders this year, which is good. Uh, previous years, we've only had one or two. So this is you know, something that we were excited to see for more competitive bidding. Um, with that, uh, the uh, bidder, uh, low bidder being PCI this year, uh, would be looking to start that work. Uh, based on this contract, we are looking at funding to be in FY24. So the work will be starting in July, uh, early July. And, uh, yeah, I would just, uh, you know, the memo obviously states we have approximately 0.3 miles that we're going to do in this contract um, and uh, substantial patchwork as well. So, is it possible to, I mean, we've had some couple, a couple years of not just a few number of bidders, but very yeah. high bids. Yes. It, 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 how does this compare? So the numbers are staying kind of fairly consistent with the higher numbers that we have been seeing. So that being said, uh, obviously higher bids means less mileage for paving. Um, there are, while this bid in itself um, is in distance a little less than what we would hope for, uh, there are other paving up, um, activities going on throughout the season. Uh, the CY22 contract, which Megan was just up here speaking out, was um, being completed, which will include a couple of uh, significant stretches along Flint Avenue and Birch Cliff. Uh, there is the class uh, one paving that the state is doing that is continuing for second year, which is going to be a fairly substantial uh, continuation of their class one upgrades um, through uh, all Minuski Avenue, um, South Willard from Main Street south down to uh, St. Paul, and then uh, St. Paul Street from Howard kind of going down to Shelburne all the way down to the southern limits. So that's going to be night work continuing this summer. And then there is also um, some work going on Lake Tallwood, as well as North Prospect Street that was part of the water resources um, revolving fund contract that has been going on the last year or so. Um, and that work is being held off until the water infrastructure work is completed. And then the final paving was going to happen with those streets as well. And that's anticipated to all be occurring this summer as well. Do you mean Prospect Street to... The memo says to Winooski Ave, but those streets don't cross. Do uh, sorry, this one here. Um, oh, Pearl Street, is, Prospect to Winooski. Yeah. 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 So we have uh, a grant again, um, state grants that for the Pearl Street section. And again, coordinating work with water resources. There will be um, some water uh, work being done by this contractor funded through the water resources group that is going to be taking place on St. Paul. And then I think our right way crew staff doing work on the other streets in advance of the contractor uh, to kind of separate those activities and try to manage our contracts as best as possible. And just because I know folks love to see where things are happening with the capital projects map that you have on the website, yep. is that like when would that be updated? And then are we doing layers now that we have that map, or is it just going to be a new map for 2020? Yeah, it will be updated by mid-April, and there, uh, our hope is to maintain the layers uh, as we've transitioned some back of house technology, but that is our expectation. That'll be very helpful for explaining why things are being done when. <laughs> yes, and we want to help in that process. I think the one piece to add is, is referenced in the memo is a little foreshadowing that the prices are reducing production and the bond that we went back to voters for when the $40 million wasn't approved, but the 23.8 was, there's no third year of general obligation bond support for paving next year. We'd be relying entirely on the street capital funds, 
which means the production next year is going to be very small unless we find another path forward. Thank you. I will put that in my council. This summer, though, is going to feel busy to people. Yeah, six point three miles of roads being cut yeah. this summer is actually quite high by our. Um, That's correct. It's, it's coming largely from state efforts, but um, two thirds of it, but uh, almost two thirds of it. But it's yeah. six point three is going to feel. It's going to be disruptions. It's going to be quite a bit fun. <laughs> okay, um, are we? Are we ready for a motion on, on this out? Happy to move the uh, to recommended actions as the Senate board talks. Thank you. Second. Second by President Paul. Discussion. Seeing none, we will go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Court. Okay, uh, 5.08 is authorization of sidewalk reconstruction program, project budget, and construction contract. And oh, would you like to kick that off? Or... Uh, I'm actually going with Maddie. Maybe you guys are right, interested. Excellent. Welcome, Maddie. Benny Sender, um, I'm an associate of the Works Engineer. Um, so this sidewalk contract is um, for a total of $610,000 with um, a base of $555,000 roughly and $55,000 of contingency. Um, we're doing three streets, East Ave, North Union and Cliff Street. Um, we are adding some coordination here with a bump out um, that will have a rain garden on Grant and Union. So this will be part of the Old North End um, hardscaping effort. Because we are doing North Union through the sidewalk contract, we absorbed that section of um, the Old North End hardscaping into this contract. So we are getting $25,000 from transportation and $5,000 from stormwater. Um, and then the rest of the $580,000 is coming from the street capital. Um, the short run list will be finalized shortly and also added to the construction portal for the April uh, kickoff. President Paul. Thanks. Uh, thanks for that ex explanation. Um, I'm happy to make the uh, make a motion to take the action as recommended on board notes. Second. Thank you, Councilor McGee. Discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, Go ahead, Councilor Joe. Thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation. And I was, I was just wondering about how do you, how do you determine which sidewalk need to need to be prioritized? This, this, you know, in, in these contracts. But before you respond, I also wanted to just say thank you so much for uh, bringing some level of equity between the contractors. It seems they all receive the same amount of. Um, you know, work because they all work with the city all the time. I'm asking the question that I asked prior to this, just because I haven't seen anything in the new North End, um, and was just wondering how do you prioritize this? So I have a, a short snippet of the prioritization process and a memo, but to go into it further, um, we have staff inspection. Um, we prioritize um, based on the sidewalk inspection as well that we did in 2021. So we did a um, citywide inventory of all the sidewalks. And then on top of that, we overlay um, usage, which, which not only considers the utilization of the sidewalk, but also um, who is using the sidewalk. So we have some equity metrics in there based on some census data. We worked with REIB and are continuing to work with them to kind of fine tune that process. Um, but we also, I mean, I, I go out and walk the streets and hear from residents and, and um, also have that um, way in. Oh, we are also, um, we had a Janet Circle. We had some additional funding that came in um, last year to the contract. And um, 
So we will be doing Janet Circle as a portion of that contract that will happen this upcoming construction season. Yes, thank you. And I think you, you about the reference about the prioritization. And when you talk about REIB, you're speaking specifically about the department, but not the committee, right? Yes. Correct. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. General Circle and also all the many other um, sites that were reported since 2019 in the new North End. Um, and we are in 2023. I think we need to revisit those. And you can ask um, Baldwin. And uh, and uh, uh, Chief Engineer Will Wilcox as well. Things have been reported 2018, 2019, and we're still waiting. Um, just so you pay particular attention to that as well. But I'll be voting in support of this tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Jang. Uh, we will certainly. I'm happy to follow up offline. Uh, we have 130 miles of sidewalk. We are getting through lists and buying down the backlog here at three miles a year, but we still do have deficient sidewalk that is still in queue from many years ago. So thank you for your patience. Happy to follow up offline. Um, and this question is for CFO Chad, I mean, and also the mayor, knowing that those are priorities and some of them are very proximity in schools and was just wondering, um you know the unassigned fund balance can we utilize them sometimes in this type of project that are the, that are priority for constituents um thank you Councilor Chang. yeah i mean the uh we have used unassigned fund balance to um at times in the past uh help increase the Overall, um, mileage of sidewalk investment, we um, worked hard in this budget to stick with, try to keep to the, the goals that we've been developed in recent years to put us back on a sustainable, put us on a sustainable uh, rate of production every year. And um, I think this budget would, do you want to say more about how it was sized? I, I can speak to it a little yeah. bit. Laura Wheelock with Public Works. Um, we put the budget together that went into the geo bond for uh, 20, the fiscal year 23 year, sorry, for 23, 24, and 25. And unfortunately, like many of our projects, there was a pretty significant increase in construction costs. We are still using those bond funds. Those were allocated and estimated to have covered our three miles a year, but like many projects going in with that funding, we are now feeling the pinch that it's not quite enough with our current construction pricing. Um, I do think it's important to see those funds through. We still have next year's allocation um, of 900,000 to, to make use of, so. Um, but I do agree in the past we've used unassigned fund balance, but that's not the, the long-term sustainable answer for the program. Thank you. Right, so we're, okay. Um, I, I hear your point, Councilor Jang, as I, I'm not sure. As you know, we've been the we've been using the unassigned fund balance. We, we've kind of been pushing it. We've been spending it down to the the target level. Um, uh, uh, between now and when this contract is fully approved next week, I'll, I'll review with uh, the CEO whether um, there's any opportunity to and with DPW as to whether there's any opportunity to get back to the full full three miles. Um, this is quite close to it, but it's, it's slightly short of the, the target that we've uh, because of the inflationary pressure so what we've been aiming at in the past. So is that, if there's an opportunity for any expansion, um, we'll work on that over the course of this week. Does that sound, is that responsive? Councilor Jang to your okay. comment? Yes, yes, thank you. All right. Um, so with that, are we ready for a motion? 
on this is a recommendation. I think we had motion, no? no we have. We, we did. Okay, sorry. Are we ready for a vote then? Sounds like we are. All yep. those in favor of the, the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Maddie, for the presentation. Um, all right. We've got, we still got a number of items, but we've been going for a while now. Okay. So, uh, uh, five point, where are we? 5.09 FY23 expense authorization, Champlain Parkway project. Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, yeah, we're here to look to get additional expense authorization for the Champlain Parkway project. Um, this project, you know, the initial construction contract uh, was issued to start in uh, about June, in April. We authorized the award of that contract. It was the uh, Forty million, nine hundred eight thousand dollar contract. Garland Ricky Joint Ventures. Um, as we proceeded with this work this season, uh, there have been um, it's been contracted to make progress, and the activities as well as uh, change orders that were in place in order to uh, address um, upgrades to existing infrastructure that were uh, not anticipated um, have added to that, along with other activities and soft costs have had us uh, ahead of where we anticipated in our engineering estimate us to be at this point in time in the fiscal year. Um, at this pace, uh, the work for this contract is anticipated to be done uh, in advance of the contracting end date, which was October of 24. There's a chance this is looking to be more early completion, um, which means that we will see more of those expenses that were anticipated sooner uh, than we had thought. Um, we had gone through and kind of looked at what we foresee for the spring work to be um, and are looking for an increase in the expense authorization to address anticipated additional expenses we plan to see this spring. Um, and that's what we're looking for is additional authorization for that expense authorization. Um, the, obviously, this is all still the same uh, funding. So this is still the 98% state bet and 2% local match. The additional 2% local match would come from street capital. Uh, and would come from FY23 available funds within the street capital. So, um, I have to admit, I didn't have time to go back and research this, but I wasn't clear how this relates back to that phase approach that we talked about and what this means in terms of how much we're improving in that. So, we could. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is nothing more to the overall. This is just we it's work that we anticipated being done in 24 and 25 is happening sooner. Which is what phase? Oh, so all <laughs> this is the initial construction contract. Okay. Um, the work that we've been doing already is just, you know, we're we're moving it along faster than it was anticipated uh, based on the original estimates. Okay, so, so we're not approving additional this phases. Is which all makes this in the phase old to Kilburn middle section. Correct. Thank yes. you. Good yeah. question. This is not changing steps on the way you approved. It's and just to give you a heads up, you're gonna be asked to do this again if I'm understanding the moment correctly. Uh yes, do the size like FY24, but that will again yep. be just appropriating the, the final amounts of for the initial construction contract. Thank you. Well, that's good news. Yeah, yeah. never hear about the other <laughs> Good news. Bad news is we need more money now. Yeah. Right. No. I'm happy. I'm happy. Thank you for the pause. Second. 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 Thank you. Um, as noted in the memo, we are still the, the, the one other kind of uncertainty still sitting out there for this project as we are for a final, final legal challenge to be ruled on in the coming weeks, really, right? By June. By June. Yeah. Mr. <laughs> um, okay, if there's no further questions, we'll go to a vote. Those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Motion carries unanimously, I believe. Sure. Um, thank you. Thank you. 5.10 traffic signal modernization. Um, 
numbers and letters after that. Um, welcome back. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, so I actually I just want to take a moment while I'm here to introduce Tom Mashtar. He's our new traffic manager. So he's in charge of all the signals, the lines, the signs, the crossing guards, talk about stuff. Um, and I'd also like to thank Corey if he's still here for what it Megan said, pots of money situations, because he helped us a lot with tonight, making sure that there were pots to pay for us. Yeah. So anyway, so this is basically for a continuation. This is another opportunity that we had. We were back, we were here last spring talking about Riverside Avenue where we're putting my cameras in on Riverside upgrading the detection system. We have a similar situation happening this summer with the paving project where we're leveraging monies that are being expended by the state where they otherwise put up with loops in the ground, which is old technology. We're leveraging that to put cameras in the sky to watch the intersections and control them, detect pets, detect bikes, count cars. Um, brings us boldly into the 21st century. Um, and that's it. Yep. Great. Floor is open for questions or motion. The thing I do feel compelled to highlight is that this will expend our tax fee balance, which is very important. We're actually required to spend all of that money. What this puts us in a puts us at a balance of hundred and sixty. Dollars, which it sounds bad, but it's actually really good. <laughs> so that is something we've been challenged with the past, right? We'll yes, to get back line. My tenure here over the four years we pretty much carried a couple two to three hundred thousand dollars in that be now. So it's President Paul. Thanks. I'll uh, make the motion. Thanks. Thank you. A second. 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 All right, Councilor McGee, thank you. Discussion? Yes, uh, yes, it's more of a question, Mr. Mayor. Okay, great. Uh, go ahead. And then we have Councilor Hightower after you. Yep. Um, and, you know, in terms of the, find, uh, the funding, it, one line is saying no participation costs of camera system paid to v, VTRAN. Can you explain that a little bit? Um, uh, non participating costs. Oh, because the the uh, paving project allocated $33,000 to the detection system mm -hmm. and the, the uh, detection system now costs 141. So our contribution, our $107,000 $107, is what's called a non-contributing cost in the parlance of the contract. So it's money we're putting into the paving contract that they're not paying for. And then we have ancillary costs which are costs that we're actually, we're piggybacking on this to take advantage of the disruption, so to speak, to make a variety of other improvements, $53,000 worth of other improvements that would never have been entertained by the trans anyway. Yep. Um, and basically it, 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 it means that whenever we hear, okay, we received this grant or the state v trend is paying for this specific project about construction, road construction, it only it is only limited to that, but anything else, the municipalities or uh, the entity need to cover it. Is it the same thing? In, in essence, we're doing add-on work that they weren't anticipating paying for, so that's that's what we're paying for. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. And traffic. So now, help me understand, like traffic signal, like basically, I, I've and also cameras. Yes. Like the traffic signal themselves are cameras or? No, there's, a, there's a single fisheye lens that sits over the intersection and it sees, it, it can see all four approaches at the same time. So it can see the cars coming in yeah. and it can count the cars as they enter the intersection. And it can also count pedestrians going to the intersection and it can count bikes going to the intersection. So we get a much more robust data set for the engineers. I actually mentioned to to Maddie, I said, what do you think of this new, new data we got? She literally said, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. So but that's a really important part. You know, we're detecting, we're detecting the whole intersection all at the same time and we're counting everything that's going on. Okay, 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 wonderful. Um, and now, you know, how does this relate with the $400,000 the city spent in um, purchasing new 
camera equipments. Um, well, those are those are security cameras. Those are completely okay. They're different. different. Okay. It's a completely different system. We don't have okay. that kind of resolution. These are intended just for detection, so they're very low grade. Can't read license plates with them. We can't even really recognize faces. This is okay. just seeing trucks, cars. Wonderful. All right. Thank you. This is good. That's right, Tara. I think that answered my question. And then um, actually another. So I know that we had a conversation on this for the Riverside cameras, and we basically said these cameras can't do any of the things that people are worried about in terms of surveillance. If they can, I think the memo says that if we can, we'll disable that sure. functionality in the future. Yep. Um, and then I'm just curious as to if you've done any because I assume people will, the cameras will be visible or visible. I don't even know if they're on the first side yet. And so we've done an education around that this is happening, but not. We haven't done a lot. We haven't done any outreach about the cameras. They're subtle. They're up there and they're the same cameras that they're used all over the state. This is one of the other things, ancillary things we're doing is getting on the same platform as the states installing all over the state. So now our traffic system can talk to Winooski, it can talk to Shelburne, we can talk around the state. Um, so it's a, it's these camera things are uh, you know, becoming common. But I think what, what we're hearing is some outreach would be good. We're happy to do that in a matter of course to let the public know about these and their limitations so that they hopefully answer the questions around the privacy. Right. So right. Yeah. Sense. And I don't know that obviously you don't need to, but it's like if you're going to the NPAs anyway, maybe yeah. just mention them. Yeah. I'm happy to include it in our education. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I think we're ready for a vote, ready for action on this item. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Are any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. See me in a little bit. Uh, you're coming back. Okay. This is the DPW Aye. Great. Um, so now we're at five point um, one one, which is the approval of four year agreement with National Business Technology to lease of copiers and paper cut payment systems. That is me. I will keep it very brief. I believe this is a very um, quick item. Um, we uh, lease our copiers. Um, the lease is for four years. Um, we work with the state because our purchasing policy um, allows us to piggyback off of theirs if it is advantageous to us. Um, we talk to two different companies. The current one who is providing excellent service is able to provide us a lease over a four-year period that is cheaper than the one we are currently paying. And so that is what is before you today. Very good. Um, questions or motion? Happy to make the motion to approve and recommend the city council authorize the CEO tab to execute a four year agreement as a set of board facts. Excellent. Thank you. Is there a second? Second by Councillor McGee. Uh, further discussion? Go to a vote. All those in, those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And uh, that brings us to a, an exciting update on the <laughs> Oak Ledge Universally Accessible Playground construction. Uh, contract uh, amendments. So welcome Sophie and Cindy. And, you know, I've somehow not been in Oak Ridge Park for a few months, I think. And uh, I understand there's lots happening down there. Maybe you could give, paint a picture for us of uh, where this stands right now. Well, right now it's covered in snow. <laughs> less and less as the day you go by. That's true, that's true. Um, the, the project kicked off in earnest in the fall in terms of construction as you know it's been a project for a while um but uh, the contractors went in there and uh, did way more than expected before snowfall and freezing um, and 
completed all the major earthwork that was required to create the playground. Um, they did install some of the play equipment, but don't tell anybody. Um, <laughs> it's covered right now because we don't have the surfacing, um, the safety surfacing in that will come um, in the spring when the subcontractor comes in. Um, but thankfully, um, they're working their way out and the way that they've progressed, the grass was already establishing before snow fell, which is pretty amazing given they started in pretty much September. Um, and then obviously uh, we had to shut down for the winter. But during that time, we also applied for additional funding, which I've already been here to request uh, approval to accept grants um, going towards the project. And um, we also uh, had requested funding for from the bond to go towards the project as well, um, because when we initially received bids, it was uh, they were significantly higher than what we had in terms of a budget. But now that we're going back into the spring, they're very eager to get in there and then complete the project. And with these additional influxes of funds, we're adding in pieces as we can, um, as well as looking at other creative ways to um, complete the project. For example, planting, we're ordering them ourselves. We're going to have work day to do the plantings. Um, and then there are other ways that we're trying to add other pieces back in that aren't, that are basically the site is set up to welcome once we have that, those funds available. But for now, we're trying to just get the, these other portions back into the contract before they get in and then they wanna be out because they have a full season ahead of them. So this is a request to modify the contract to add the pieces that we want them to finish before they leave us. Um, and it's also for the resident engineer as we're adding in uh, con contractor funding, we also need the resident engineers to add in three more weeks of their work. So we're increasing their contract amount. So that's a request and I'm sorry, that was all. No, it's great, it's exciting. Um, and we've, it's exciting to think this will be open in June. We're ready for June, Amazing. big party. <laughs> that's gonna be a big day. Yeah, big time. A lot of people who have been involved in this project for a long time. Um, floor is open for discussion, questions, motion. So Paul. Um, I, yes. Go ahead. Can I speak? Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you, Cindy and um, and Tim. Thank you so much for, for this. This is, I think this is, this is unique and it seems this is the only playground in the state of Vermont. Um, that will be accessible, if I understand this correctly. And also all the great, wonderful organizations that have been pushing about this and the component of equity in terms of early childhood education and, and is, is just key, right? And I'm really happy to make the motion as indicated on board doc and to felicitate you to, to getting it here. Thank you, Councilor Jane. Do we have a second? Second by President Paul. Any further discussion? Okay, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And the final item of this section, we have one more for for, for approval only, but the final item of this section is the Letty Park Pause Place Construction. Pause Place, another project we've been working on for a long time. Exciting to see it. Coming to fruition. Max, it was Chris Summer. Okay, great. Um, hi, Max. Um, welcome. Why don't you tee this up for us? Yep, sounds good. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for having us tonight. Basically, all we're looking at here is completing a long awaited project that uh, we've been trying to get to for about the past four years. Uh, this will be to construct a final pause place along the bike path, as was sort of initially called out in the original envisioning of having some resting areas and pause places along the Greenway way back when the rehabilitation of the Greenway was first designed back in what was it like 2013, 2011. Um, so what this is going to consist of is that the intersection of the Burlington Greenway with the entrance path that comes to the Letty Ice Arena is we'll be building a new con uh, concrete pad there that'll kind of open up that intersection. It'll be oval shaped, similar to a lot of other things we've built along the Greenway. We'll be repaving that main access path 
uh, that goes out to the upper entrance of the ice arena, paving the path that goes down to the lower entrance there, uh, building some new concrete pads to put in bike racks, fix-it stations, benches, things like that, that uh, just kind of make the site generally better overall. And then building another concrete pad, which is gonna house some additional fitness equipment, similar to what's in the urban reserve up at Star Farm, and uh, also along with a new one that's coming soon at Oak Ledge. So that'll be completing uh, donation funds that were given to us by the UVM uh, fitness, uh, UVM Health Center some time ago to build a fitness trail along the Greenway. Um, and then the other major portion of this project that we're seeking approval on is to construct a bioretention basin. Uh, it's going to be adjacent to the pause place, but it's actually offsetting impervious surface that was added in the south end of Burlington as part of the phase three construction of the bike path. Uh, this is just how it was permitted with the state, largely because the soils in the south end are a pretty heavy clay. And so it's really difficult to infiltrate enough water in the south end and through the bike path corridor down there to accommodate the permitting requirements for the state. So we are sort of doing this trade or offset, which is permittable through their regulations to build this up at Letty, where we built a, a similar one way back during phase two of the bike path rehab in the north end of the city. So this one will kind of mirror that new bioretention basin that's there. They'll be planted with a whole bunch of perennials and trees and shrubs and things like that and should really help to beautify what is kind of an open, desolate stretch of the Greenway where you're riding past the big open parking lot at Letty Arena. We have no desolate parts of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree. This should be uh, an upgrade of our beautiful bike path. Um, can you, so that's actually, I was wondering about that. So the, the it's the overall, it's essentially the overall stormwater permit. Yeah, that, the whole bike path was one project. The whole bike path is one project in this. Um, and this ensures that the kind of net impact of the bike path is captured. It's captured. Great. Yep. Uh, okay. So thanks for that uh, thorough uh, summary, Max. The floor is open for a motion, questions, comments. Yes, I would like to make the motion as indicated on board doc and Max, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jane. Do we have a second? Second by Councillor Hightower, discussion? Great, we'll go to a vote. Another, another project will be exciting to see you get done this season. Mm -hmm. uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? motion carries unanimously and uh great can't wait to uh, um, yeah thanks so much park thank bike you. Um, That's right. yeah. <laughs> thank you yeah um, okay final item of the night 6.01 approval to enter a contract with toter llc for the purchase of 2200 various size covered wheeled recycling carts $99,000 item. Welcome, Lee. Thank you for having me. If you have Get out for us. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So, yeah, we're, as the mayor just said, we're here requesting approval to enter into a contract with Toter. Uh, as you may remember, we were back here last July to order our initial slug of carts for our initiative. Um, we were at 4000 at the time. Our supplies are starting to get depleted, so we're coming another round. About 2200 carts were concentrating on 35 gallon and 65 gallon cards right now. They're pretty popular. Um, we do have some supply left uh, out of our original amount. If you're interested, I do have those numbers. But yeah, basically, you know, that's in a nutshell. Uh, we have done a lot of public outreach and continue to do public outreach. Uh, at the end of this month, we are gonna be stickering uh, recycling bins as we pick them up to let people know that they're going to have to trade those in. I did bring one of those stickers that we received. Um, so those will be going on for the end of this week. Great. Say again. What are we doing? So we're going to be stickering all the bins that are out there in current use. Uh, the non-compliant. Yeah, the non-compliant <laughs> cards. So the little 
rectangular bins. Yes. I got it. It's got um, it. Got so it. Okay. Great. Great. We can't ignore it. We, we flip it upside. It's <laughs> off. But we empty them. We leave them upside down. We'll stick the sticker on the bottom. And when they go to pick it up, they'll see. Wow. The sticker. Wait on the bottom. Oh, when they put because the it'll be flipped over. Yeah. So. I think Oh, yeah. yeah, because they'll put the bins will be upside down on the, the green space, and this will be on it. So as they bend over to pick it up, you'll see the sticker. Yeah. <laughs> Press the pop. Oh, that looks bad. So this is like this is like you know. Let me say say this for last because it's, this is very exciting. Um, so I have a question, um, and I just didn't have time to go back and look. Who who did we get them from the last time? We got them from Cascade Engineering. Yes, I remember that name. So, um, really, <laughs> you remember? <laughs> like a <laughs> oh yes, oh yes. Um, anyway, the um, are they basically like the same toter? It's It'll just a compare. It's just a different. Company. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, I think this is wonderful. So I'm happy to make the motion to, as recommended on board docs, let's bring on those toters. We have a second. Yeah. We got a second by Councilor Hightower. Um, discussion. Yes. Um, yes, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I, I like the reaction of the mayor when you said stickering. I mean, how he definitely asked to make sure that we, we, we understand what you're talking about. Uh, it, it, it was good. Also, wanted to mention that actually we've been waiting in my household here. We applied and we paid, I believe, and we're still waiting. And it kind of makes sense that maybe you don't have enough right now. What what size container? Uh, I what I I think we have two sizes, and it seems none of them have been here yet. We paid around forty two dollars or forty something, so it's it must be two. Maybe double check. Um, two different sizes. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I mean, I think, yes, the stickering is, is great. And also the cards that you sent to household, I think the post, via post office was amazing. It reminded me that needs to be done. And I just want to also correlate it around the parking ban into effect. There were significant amount of new American whose car were towed, right? But we'll follow up with the respective people. And was just wondering about the stickers as well. Will it be translated in any different language, or is, because I can't see it as where I am right now? Um, the stickers themselves are not, but there is, um, you know, a code that they can read. It will direct them to the website where it is translated into multiple languages. Okay. There's right. a Q QR code on the sticker that leads to a web. Page that is translate translatable uh, with links. Okay. All right. Um, thank thank you. I think the outreach has been amazing so far. Yeah. But thank you. Thank you. We will follow Councilor Jang on your outstanding order. Uh, I think it's probably because we are out of the smallest toter size, and we're probably waiting to bring your toters once we have the smaller. But I'll double check tomorrow. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Are we ready for a vote on this item? We are. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. That uh, completes our final item. I do want to say one more thing before we adjourn. I just, um, I, I just, with DPW still here, want to go back, uh, Councillor Jang, to the. Um, the discussion we had uh, about the new uh, the new positions um, with water resources. I, I hope you, I mean, I, we've, we got a plan now to address the questions you raised. We're always happy to try to work with counselors to, um, to address them. And I know, I mean, I just, the point I wanna make is the staff clearly works very hard to give the council information needed to make items. Um, and if you need more, you know, where we will work hard to continue to accommodate that. Um, and maybe it was not intended this way, but I think the idea that somehow a disservice had been done uh, was, um, uh, I, I would hope we could talk to each other differently in, in these public 
uh, meetings. Uh, certainly no one intended to do any kind of disservice uh, to, to the board here. And in fact, it was very thorough. A lot of work went into it. If more time is needed to get everyone comfortable with it. That's what we're going to do this week. But I, um, I just just felt a need to, to, to point that out. That it felt like a, not quite the a challenging language to, to use in this form. Happy to talk about it further. Another setting, if you'd like, Councillor Jang. Not, not hearing any comment from you here. I am. Yes. That there's no further business for tonight. Uh, if there's no objection, we are adjourned at 6.56 p.m.